Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over all the little symbols you can see on your events. If you've been working in Studio One for a while, you may have noticed that on your events, every once in a while, on the bottom right, you'll get a little symbol. And some of these kind of tell you what they're doing, and some of them really don't. Let's go ahead and dive into the DIW, take a look at these symbols and what they actually mean. So here we are inside of the session, and it's just something I'm working on for a, a few different videos, and it's a combination of printed MIDI drums, which are up here in light blue, and I left the MIDI event up on top, and down here are my actual instruments. Blue is my bass guitar, green are my actual guitars. So let's go over some of the symbols, and you may be asking already, well, which symbols are you talking about? Well. I'm talking about anyone in an event. So with our events bigger, I'm talking about these. Something like this. You'll see it at the bottom left of your event, and they all have different meanings. Now let's get into our examples, and let's start with this one. This little stack of slices, this symbol tells you that you are working with an event that comes from a stack of layers. You can also see a very similar kind of icon over on your track header over here. It's a very similar looking stack of horizontal slices. This is where you can expand your layers with this button here. But back on the events, this is telling you that this is just one of your takes or your layers. So it's showing that there's others available. Now let's do another easy one. If I take this event right here, hold down shift and hit M on my keyboard, I can mute just this event and not the whole track. Don't mind that the track is muted, this is for something else. But just this event is now muted. So if the track was open, the rest of these guitars would play. But this one, because it has this symbol here, the speaker with the slash through it, this is now showing us that it's a muted event. And it's also still showing us that it has layers. Now let's find another symbol that needs a little bit of processing. If I was going to time stretch this event right here, and I'm going to do that by holding down Command and Alt on my keyboard, or that would be Control and Alt on a PC, I can now stretch this event out. And after a little bit of processing, we now have the next symbol, which is the little gear icon. When you see the little gear icon, it is telling you that there has been some sort of time processing to this event. In this case, we time stretch the event to make it longer, but it could be something as simple as sample rate change. If it was one sample rate in a different session and you brought it in, it would show you this so that it could actually play it at the right sample rate. And another way you would get this symbol is if you're using audio bend. If you use audio bend and those tools to kind of move your waveforms around a little and tighten up the timing, you'll see this same event symbol. Now let's go over the next symbol, which goes hand in hand with event effects. If you haven't already, I already have some videos out there going over event effects. So I'll put a card and there'll be a link in the description for some of those videos. Again, let's say that on this event, we want to put just a cool chorus effect. We don't want it across the entire track, we just want it on this intro part on this track itself. So we can do an event effect. Let me open up my browser and we'll just pull the chorus in, kind of default, it'll be fine for now, it's just an example. I'm gonna hold down Option on my keyboard or Alt on a PC, drag the chorus onto the event, you can see it turns yellow. When I let go of the mouse, there is now an event effect on just that event. Here's the plugin, we can do whatever kind of manipulation we want. So let's take a look at our symbol. Here we go, a tiny FX with an arrow over it. This is telling us that this event, whether it be rendered or not, has event effects applied to it. Okay, now we're gonna get into the tricky ones. Sometimes you'll see these, and actually I was working with a student recently who was trying to do event effects but wasn't able to and that's because he was working on a merged event. A merged event is when you have multiple clips of your audio. Let's take everything on this second track. We have different takes. So this track here, I can shift select all of my clips, and then on the keyboard, I'm gonna hit the letter G. That's the shortcut. 
This will merge the events and make it look like one continuous event. And it shows us our next symbol, the chain. This is a merged event. Sometimes it's a linked event. It goes by a few different names. But when it's like this, and the way that my student had it, you're no longer able to do event effects on a merged event. Because we just did it now, I could just undo. But if you were working for a while and happened to have done this and maybe forgot what you're doing, one way to get past this is to just bounce your event. So on a Mac, I'm going to do Command B, or on a PC, that'll be Control B. Once you bounce your file, you can now go in, make your edits, and do your event effects once again. I'm going to quickly undo so that you can see when it goes back to a merged event. If I want to do my edits, I cut here, and they all still have the gang chain merged event symbol. And I'm going to try and do event effects. And it's not letting me. So the next time you're working with your audio and something just doesn't seem right, check for this symbol, the merged event symbol. And maybe you just need to do a bounce. As good practice, I would recommend duplicating the layer and then bouncing because it's just like a safety net. You make the duplicate because it's just a backup. And now last and certainly not least is duplicate shared. We all know how to duplicate events. If I come here and just want to grab this event, I can hit D on my keyboard and I'll start making duplicates of this event. Now, let's say you're working with MIDI drums or patterns or something like that, and you want to duplicate that event across your entire timeline. But after you do it, you realize, you know what, I really want to adjust this beat that I made or this pattern that I made a little. When you go up and try and edit the first instance of your MIDI pattern or loop, you're only going to affect that one. Or maybe you have the opposite. You go to try and affect just one and you affect all of them. If you know that you want to do that to everything, what you want to do is duplicate shared. So let's go up to our MIDI. That's this track up here. And what I'm going to do is instead of hitting D on my keyboard, I'm going to hold down shift and hit D. Now we'll get the last of our event symbols. And that's the little ghost. The ghost is telling us that there's another event that is shared to this one. What that means is if I go into this MIDI event and change anything, the duplicate that is shared will have the same exact changes. Maybe this is enlightening to you because perhaps you've been duplicate shared some of your events previously and you didn't want to affect all of them. You just wanted to affect the ones you picked. You could have possibly used duplicate shared when you were doing all of that. And really you should have just using standard duplicate. So there you go. That are the event symbols inside Studio One and what they mean. If you're still confused by anything, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a follow up video and I'll go into deeper detail about what you're asking. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.